So Pokemon Go is being hailed as an app that, get this, lets people use their phones to interact with the physical world. Does that sound at all familiar? For anyone who's used Foursquare, it sure does. Foursquare launched seven years ago. Originally, it was a game where you gained points based on how many times you checked in at various places. And it was the second location-based app for the founder, Dennis Crowley. He sold his first one, which was called Dodgeball, to Google back in 2005. And now he's here to talk about Pokemon Go from the unique perspective of being the guy who blazed the trail <laughs> of location-based games years ago. Welcome, one, Dennis. One of many. One of many that's blazed the trail. But one thank you for many. having me. Appreciate it. All right. So, so why are you here to talk about Pokemon Go? Are there similarities between Foursquare and Pokemon Go, and which ones are they? Yeah, I think people have asked us uh, just on the last couple of days about, hey, is Foursquare uh, technology powering Pokemon Go? Which it's, it's not. It was done by a separate company. But I think people are saying, like, listen, if this is the future of what games look like, what are they going to look like a couple of years from now? And our belief is that, you know, Foursquare technology is going to power a lot of what you're seeing uh, in the future in terms of basically games and experiences that change depending on where you bring your phone. So when you say Foursquare technology, what are you, what are you talking about? I mean, I, I thought Pokemon Go is based on Google Maps and it superimposes virtual characters on the real world around you. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the location tech in Pokemon Go is pretty, it's pretty basic. It's, it's latitude and longitude, I'm just walking around, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I think what's been novel is they found a way to package it up so you've got kids running around, like, exploring the world. Right. Uh, if you remember, this is the stuff that we, we were doing with Foursquare back in the day. How do we encourage people to go specifically into one business versus another or go try this restaurant versus that restaurant? And I think what's going to happen is a lot of this technology will start to change based on are you in this coffee shop or that coffee shop? Have you been inside this store or have you been inside that store before? And this is a lot of the technology that we've been really good at building, this contextual and location awareness. I see. And it, it seems like Pokemon Go has in its future this enormous monetizing scheme. They're going to let businesses uh, pay to have more critters or yeah. Pokestops in front of their pizzeria or coffee shop. Yeah. Um, what was Foursquare's basic business plan? Well, we used to do, um, back when we first started, it was like, if you check in a number of times, you might unlock a special. And, you know, merchants were flocking to that, and it was really interesting. It was very difficult to scale it up. Um, and so now that Foursquare has been around, um, you know, it's about eight years now, we found all sorts of different business models, including, you know, advertising products and data licensing services and technology licensing services. So we're less working with, you know, local merchants in that sense. We're selling them deals and discounts. But I think it's going to be interesting to see how now that there's all this renewed interest in location-based gaming, like, what, what do the Pokemon folks actually do with some of these big chains? And is it successful over time? Right. Uh, you're getting to observe this hysteria. I mean, this thing is a week old, you know, Nintendo stock up 50%, <clears throat> outnumbers t time we spend on Facebook, outnumbers people using Tinder or Twitter. I mean, it's this giant hype wave, and you lived through that once, right? You're a veteran of the hype wave. Well, I think I've lived through it a, a couple of times. Yeah, sure. a couple of yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what, what, what is it like being the, the piece of uh, flotsam on top of this tidal wave. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, I'm enjoying playing the game. My wife and I and our daughter, our little newborn daughter, have been running around. Your kind newborn of daughter's and, been playing Pokemon Well, she's Go. like attached <laughs> to one of us as we're running around trying to figure it out. Um, and it's, um, you know, it's been, it's, been a lot of, it's been a lot of fun to play. Um, I think what's interesting is like how, how long are people going to be infatuated with it? For? Yeah. You know, I think one of the fun things with Foursquare is like we've been around eight years. And so we've had all sorts of times to, you know, kind of rebuild and change things and find a really workable, sustainable business model, which is great. And I'm wondering, like, is, are people going to be as hooked on it, you know, two weeks from now? Am I going to be as hooked on it two weeks from now? And I think that's the, that's the fun thing to see. Because, you know, different games and different apps come and go all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's only a select few of them that get to stick around for a long time. Um, and so, you know, I want to see how this evolves. I, I want to see if they're still playing Pokemon Go when it gets cold out. Well, like, this is a perfect summer thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, also, kids are off from school. So it's, yes. it's, timed, it's timed very, very well. That's right. Um, but also, what happens after you get them all? Like, after you aren't collecting any new ones, is it still as interesting? Um, I don't know. I, one of the, th the cool things about Pokemon, though, it's like, it's not like it just came out of left field. I mean, this is like a, a franchise that's been around for 20 years. I mean, there's probably... 20 different versions of this video game, this just happens to be the, the latest version of it. So it's a very sophisticated game that's been you know, tested many times through many generations of players. So it's very, very sophisticated. So it has like a long shelf life. It's just 
how long are people going to want to run around the parks collecting right. things, it's which just, I think is interesting. It still makes no sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been enjoying playing it a lot. It's been, pretty, it's been pretty fun. So you're not doing any muttering like, you know, all this hype. I was there eight years ago. <laughs> no, I think there's like, there's a small group of people that were really involved in like, you know, pitching and, and just like dreaming up like what location-based games will look like. And a lot of us have, have you know, you know, looked at some of this stuff in the past. I mean, there've been tons of augmented reality games. There's been, you know, hundreds of GPS games. I've, I've probably worked on like five or six of them. None of them ever get this level of traction. I think it's, it's fun to see this one and be like, whoa, someone actually pulled it off in a way that people actually care about. You know, like when we started Foursquare, it was all, what does a piece of software look like that makes you go to this restaurant instead of this restaurant? Can you make a piece of software that's like a nudge or a pat on the back for doing something you wouldn't normally do? And, you know, I think we were pretty successful at that. But, you know, I think the Pokemon folks started with, what does a piece of software look like that makes kids run around the city? And they've been really successful at making that happen. So just to see people in the same space that have these same crazy ideas making it work, I think that's, that's a lot of fun to see. Right. And I, I love how parents are like, Kids, put those books down. It's time to get outside with your electronics. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, so Foursquare is no longer like I'm. I'm checking in at this pizzeria. I'm the mayor. It's it's right. It's morphed. Right. What well, what is Foursquare today? Well, Foursquare now has Foursquare. The company has two apps. One is called Foursquare the app, which helps people find you know the best places to go anywhere in the world, and the other one is called Swarm, which is more of this location check-in game. And so Swarm is still very popular. We get, you know, uh, there's millions of check-ins every day, maybe 8 million check-ins every day. Uh, and it's people telling us about the things that they love in the real world. Mm -hmm. um, so in that sense, it is kind of like Pokemon, where they're both like games that happen in the real world. But Foursquare is a little bit more of like a, every time you go someplace, you get to pull the slot machine once, whereas Pokemon is just like, just run around with the butterfly net and capture as many things as you can. Right. So right. both location-based, but like different mechanics. So, so what does Foursquare the app do? I mean, you, you said, the way you describe it, it sounds like Yelp, like, oh, I need to find a good Indian restaurant. Yeah, I like to think that we built a better, smarter version of Yelp that's very much like crowdsourced from the community. Huh. So, and one of the things that we've been trying to do with Foursquare is to have it have a real, like, you know, a strong opinion or point of view. Like, hey, Dennis, based upon all the things that we've seen you do, we think you should go to this place, this place, and this place. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to make it very proactive. Like with all the awesome technology that we've built, we want Foursquare to be the thing that like when you're walking down the street, will buzz you and say, hey, Dennis, you got to go inside this particular dessert store and try this particular ice cream because we think you would love it. Mm -hmm. Right? So it goes back to like kind of our philosophy in the early days of like, what does a piece of software look like that can tap you on the shoulder and tell you to go left instead of right or go into this store instead of that one? And so right. we're still building that thing. And it's, um, you know, every year the technology gets better, in part because we, we make a lot of it. Right. Um, and so I think the experience gets better. So the, the website lists you no longer as the CEO of Foursquare. You are now the executive chairman. Executive chairman, What's yeah. What's the difference? And, and according to Wikipedia, that involved a stepping down. Was it, is that a down? I think it's more of a up, right? Like, <laughs> it, to me, it's like I don't have to manage the day-to-day um, parts of the of the of the organization. I don't you know manage anyone directly, gotcha. but I get to work with a whole bunch of different teams there. They're doing lots of R and D type of projects that are setting the strategic vision for the company. They get to think about this type of stuff, like okay, now that augmented reality is a thing, do we want to play in that space or do we not? Like, how can the technology that we've built power the next 100 companies that want to make something like Pokemon, right? right? So those are the conversations I get to have with people at Foursquare and people outside of Foursquare. Well, cool. We'll go back to the drawing board then and come up with Five Square. I'll be <laughs> that's, that's, All the away. kids are talking about it in Japan. It's huge. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Well, thank you very much, Dan awesome. Carly. Thanks for having me. I appreciate the it. The founder of Foursquare. So what are your thoughts on Pokemon Go, Foursquare, and the future of location-based apps? Let us know in the space below or on the Yahoo Finance Facebook page. I'm David Pogue.